What's up YouTube? Today we are talking about the top 5 accessories for the Fuji X100V. Let's get into it. Before we actually start talking about the accessories though, I quickly wanted to mention that all of the accessories mentioned in this video will work for any Fuji X100 line of camera. So if you have the X100F, the T or whatever, these accessories will, as far as I know, work for your camera as well. Another note is that all of the accessories mentioned in this video will be fairly expensive and also fairly obvious choices, so no surprises here I guess. But if you're on the fence about buying any of the items mentioned on this list, maybe specifically because they are fairly expensive, this video might still help you out and give you an idea of uh, whether or not these items are worth your money or not. So let's get into it. So the first item on this list is a good camera strap. To me, the X100V is the perfect everyday and travel companion camera. It's unobtrusive and a nice tool to always have accessible. So even though I'm usually not a camera strap kind of person whatsoever, I chose to buy one for this and I think it works amazingly well. First of all, functionally speaking, it allows me to have my camera accessible and ready at all times. No more need to reach into your bag every time you want to capture that special moment. Especially with an intuitive street shooting monster like the X100V, this should be a no-brainer. But more than that, I also think that a decent leather strap really captures and complements the aesthetics of this camera. You can obviously go with whatever materials you want, but I chose to get a decent leather strap specifically because I thought it would fit the character of this camera really well. Now the bad news is that you will probably not be able to buy this exact strap. It is made out of harness leather and I bought it at Manufactum. I have linked it in the description below, no affiliation by the way, but I don't know if they do sell or ship internationally. Anyway, they do offer this strap in two different lengths, 110 and 140 centimeters, and I went for the shorter one. Aside from just looking outstanding, you can really feel the quality on this one. The shoulder padding is actually made out of elk leather and it's extremely comfortable and the rougher underbelly gives the strap a decent amount of grip, which prevents it from slipping off of my shoulders, which is something that could really ruin my day. Also, I seriously love the way this attaches to the camera. You simply loop these thin endings through the attachment rings on your camera, hook it onto these brass pins and slip the little leather sleeve over so there's almost no chance of this getting undone by accident and at the same time your camera is not at risk to rub up against those brass pins if you put it away in your bag. Overall, if you can get your hands on it, I would highly recommend the strap. If this is not an option, I would still recommend getting a different strap anyway. Maybe something made by Squarehood, but having a camera strap on your X100 line of camera will simply lead to you using it more often, which in turn will bring more opportunities for great shots. Good times. The second item on the list is technically a set of two items, but anyway, we'll roll with it. As most of you will probably know, the Fuji X100V is advertised as being waterproof, but only with a filter attached. Now, to be completely honest, I knew screwing a filter on was an option back when I had my Fuji X100F, but for some reason it never really crossed my mind to make use of it. Then I bought the X100V and primarily just bought the adapter ring to get that weather ceiling. But it is so much more than that. But let's slow down for a second. Fuji does offer their own adapter ring and filter and lens hood. They sell all of these items separately and at way too high prices in my opinion. This adapter and lens hood combo by JJC did cost me only 16 euros, which is so nice that I bought it twice, but more on that in a minute. The filter I use on this one is also just a simple 49mm UV filter by Hoyer. Even if you don't need the weather ceiling, this will still add an element of protection for your lens, especially if you, like myself, prefer to transport and carry your camera without the lens cover. The trade-off, however, is obviously that it takes up more space in your bag. However, you do also gain the ability to attach all kinds of filters, but more on that later. Just on a side note, and this is true for all items I own that screw onto the front element of this camera, there is a difference in the silver of the body of this camera and the silver of whatever I attach to this camera. Is this ideal? Certainly not. Does it bother me? Not really. Unless you stare at it, you probably won't notice it in your day-to-day -day life either. But I thought you might want to know anyway. The third item on my list is the Fuji X100 WCL Mark II, which is a wide conversion lens that also attaches to the front element of this camera and will give you an equivalent focal length of 28mm over the 35mm 
the X100 line of cameras usually offer. So in other words, if you buy this camera to get a poor man's Leica Q, this is what you want. But aside from that, me personally, I really like having a bit more flexibility and to not always be limited to a 35mm equivalent focal length. Now, I get the argument. If you don't want to have a fixed focal length, don't buy this camera in the first place. Fuji offers other compact cameras with interchangeable lens systems like the X-Pro3, the X-T30 and so on that will give you all the flexibility you would ever want. And yes, I agree. But after owning the X100F and now the X100V, it was just kind of refreshing to switch things up a bit and it revitalized my love for this camera. Also, buying this camera with the respective conversion lenses is a hell of a lot cheaper than buying an X-Pro3 with a 23, 35 and 50mm f2 lens. Now granted, these would probably have a slight edge over this setup in image quality, but overall I think this is a steal and a great way to get even more fun and use out of a camera that was and is my absolute favorite camera to begin with. Also, the WCL uses the same 49mm filters as the filter adapter I talked about previously. And even the lens hood works on this one just fine. With that being said, the lens hood will be a very tight fit at first, but after it's broken in, it will pretty much just fall off your old filter adapter. Hence why I bought a second set of filter adapters and lens hoods. I am still glad though that the lens hood does fit at all, because again, it does add another layer of protection and also reduces lens flare. Plus, I think it also evens out the proportions of this lens a bit, but anyway. On the same note, after buying and falling in love with the WCL, I decided to also go with the TCL, which is a teleconversion lens that gives you the full frame equivalent of a 50mm focal length. I got to be honest, I wasn't sure about whether or not it would be a good idea to buy this for the longest time. With the WCL, it was more clear cut for me. It was impossible to widen the field of view without something like this, so if I wanted a 28mm focal length, I simply had to go with the WCL. With the TCL, however, I could always just use the digital converter instead, or simply crop in later in post. Yeah, I might lose some resolution, but whatever. The images would still probably look sharp enough for my needs. So the main reason for me to get this was in order to get more of that lovely bokeh out of this lens. And from what I gathered in most videos on YouTube, that simply didn't seem to be the case. Then I stumbled across a random blog post that I sadly can't seem to find anymore, but in this post there were side by side images that clearly showed a noticeable increase in creaminess in the background blur. So off I went to buy it and I haven't regretted it since. The TCL is great in terms of fit and finish, just like the WCL. But sadly, it does have a way bigger front element, so my beloved 49mm filters won't fit on this one. There is, however, something to be said about a big front glass element. At first, I thought this looked completely out of proportion on the X100V, but I've gotten so used to it over the past weeks that the camera almost looks weird to me without it. So overall, if you like the 50mm focal length, I would highly recommend the TCL. With this and the WCL, I got all my three favorite focal length in a still relatively packable size. Unlike other people on YouTube, I also didn't find the process of screwing these lenses on or off to be cumbersome in any way. The threads are milled very precisely and I do get a good feeling of when the threads hook onto each other. Then it's just a couple of turns and you're done. They always feel solid and I've never had any of them come loose on me. Another benefit with this that I quickly want to throw in here is that all of these should technically give you that weather seeding of your dreams. Good stuff. So, the last items on the list are my filters, which again are technically more than one item, but who really gives a damn anyway? As stated previously, these 49mm filters will work on the filter adapter as well as the WCL, but not on the TCL. The first filter I recommend simply to add some protection is a UV filter. Doesn't have to be this one, you can get Fuji's overpriced UV filter if you have money to burn, but I always like to have some filter on this guy to give me that peace of mind. Other than that, I would seriously recommend to get some kind of polarizing filter, as well as a mist filter. The polarizer I use is a cheap guy, and it doesn't give me the best results, so I probably wouldn't recommend this specific one, but it's the idea that counts, and I will most likely upgrade this guy at some point. The filter I was very glad I didn't cheap out on though is this Tiffin Black Pro Mist Quarter Stop Filter. This filter does add some mist and contrast to your image, which smooths out some textures and adds a feeling of atmosphere, especially to the light in your image. 
I think it adds some character and an almost film-like look into your images. But remember, these effects are sort of baked into your photos and videos, so if you want to remove them in post, you are out of luck. To close this list off, I have an honorary mention for these pouches. If you want to protect your camera while carrying it without resorting to a full-on camera bag, these guys don't take up much space and they fit the X100 like a glove. This extra small one works perfectly if I don't have anything attached to the front lens of this camera. And the other one works with the filter adapter and the lens hood or the WCL attached. I don't use them a lot these days because they can be a bit fiddly to get on and off, but if you want to protect the reselling value of your cameras, this might still be a good investment. But anyway, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think about the items I picked for this video and also if I'm missing out on anything. So if there are any items that I should check out, let me know in the comments down below. Also, if you're interested in any of the items shown in this video, I've tried to link anything mentioned in this video in the description down below. If you have any specific questions about any of the items shown in this video or about this camera, let me know in the comments down below. And yeah, again, thank you so much for watching. Take care. Till next time.